So welcome back as we uh, finish off our new series. Um, we're into week six and it has been an incredible journey of um, discovering newness in Christ, uh, discovering newness in scripture, discovering newness of heart, discovering newness of mind, of thinking, of um, commitments, the whole, you know, everything about ch uh, church and about the Bible. And um, we finish off this week with a new commandment that Christ leaves us with and at the moment that Jesus says it just before he's preparing his heart to be crucified um, he says these words I give you a new commandment um, and for the Jews at the time the commandments were a big deal they were kind of what everything hinged on for them and um, here is Jesus as he says I leave you with a new commandment love one another as I have loved you um, and this commandment kind of supersedes all the other command it kind of it, for me the, the love one another is the glue that holds it all together um, and when Jesus says this you could kind of see these these Jews going wait what one you don't just go around making up new commands no you don't just go around you know it's, you know people got stoned for that that was like heresy We've received the commandments for a reason and the commandments hold us to the standard that God has set for us. And he has Jesus that says, I have a, a commandment which I'm going to leave you with, um, which kind of just holds all the commandments within one. And um, I mean, that's a whole series on itself. You could do a whole series on just this commandment and how it ties into all the other commandments and how it sort of glues it all together. But we're going to try and unpack it for you now with, within as we wrap up uh, this, this series. And, but it is, it is the essence of what we believe and why we believe it and the glue that holds everything together. I guess this is really the, the commissioning because that's what yeah. Jesus is doing here with his disciples. Is, um, he's sending them out into the world and saying, as you go now, I'm giving you a new commandment. So he says, we read in John 13, from verse 34 to 35, that you love one another as I have loved you. Yeah. And by this, all people will know that you are my disciples and yeah. you will love each other. And so those are really profound words, but what makes it even more profound is to look at the context of what was happening as Jesus was saying yeah. this. So just before he gave this new commandment was the Last Supper. And we read in John chapter 13 that what happened at the Last Supper was that Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And so there's still reeling from this, which is a totally... <laughs> the rabbi standing. washing the, 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 you know, servant's feet yeah, is not something totally that happens. totally breaks yeah. with tradition and with the norm of how things are done and with social spheres structures. and structures. He has a tendency and, to break structures. And he kneels down and washes his mm. disciples' feet and he's trying to help them understand. He says to them in that time, he says, the servant isn't greater than the master, so you have to do what I have done. And then they have the whole Last Supper and all this drama that's unfolding around it. And then he says to them, I'm giving you a new commandment. And so the context of this is this incredible act of selflessness, of service, of sacrifice. Yeah. And then the kind of like lie, this commandment lies in the middle between the washing of the disciples' feet and the crucifixion. And there's really no greater sacrifice and sacrificial service than that. To love one another. Yeah. So when Jesus was saying, I want you to love others as I have loved you, that's a, that's a big thing to say because that kind of love is the kind of love that kneels down and washes people's feet in a way that goes way beyond comfort zones and traditions and social structures to serve. And a love that's even willing to lay down its life. Yeah, for me, it, the whole concept of washing someone's feet 
when they've been in shoes all day, you know, it doesn't sit well with me. I know they were in sandals at those day, in that time, but they were all cracked and, and gruesome because they've been in the dirt all day. And, you know, it's not a pretty sight, but yet Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, gets down on his knees and he, and he demonstrates for us the commandment. And I, that's what I love about Jesus, is he doesn't just tell us, he shows us. And in everything that he commands of us, that he um, expects of us, that he shares with us, that he teaches us, he did. Um, and showing us love like that and not just telling us to love. You know, he, he, he is the savior of the world and he could have very easily just turned around and said, you need to love everybody, you know, but he doesn't. He shows us how to love people. He, he gets down on his knees and he serves. He, and I think he did that specifically so that yeah. he could show that the kind of love he requires of us is not a comfortable, let me love you from a distance yeah. kind of love. It's, it's sacrificial, yeah. it's difficult, it's socially unacceptable. Sometimes, it's, you yeah. know, it's really not a comfortable kind of love yeah. which he calls us to love. And this has been the light of the world. And it starts with the church loving itself. Because within the church, if we love each other the way Christ loves us, the, the world would see us very differently. The world would view the church as something that, wow, it's something to strive for. It's something to, these guys are showing us the way. They're on the forefront of, of what is expected, what is normal. And um, sometimes I think the church gets it wrong. I think we're, we're so, so we're entwined so in our own agendas. We so miss the mark and you know Jesus says specifically, by this you will be known no. as my disciples, yeah. by your love for each other. And um, I think so often people identify the church by a lot of things, but not, but not love. love. Yeah. And that's that's really what the call is, is to love each other so much that people will be able to say, those people, those ones follow Jesus because of their love. Uh, yeah. um, and. I don't know where we went wrong that somehow <laughs> the church is associated with judgment and pointing out other people's faults and or hypo yeah, being yeah, hypocrites or, or hypocrisy hypocrites. or whatever yeah. it is but it's really what is supposed to be the identifying factor in our lives as Christ followers is that we are loving to everyone you know starting within the church and looking at ourselves and going how do we love our brothers and sisters in Christ and I think that's a good place to start mm -hmm. but loving those that hurt us loving the sinner, loving the hater, loving those who have wronged us in some way or, or shape or form is our witness and you know we, we struggle with this and I think it's, it's okay to struggle with it but it's, it's good to identify it and to work at it daily, um, to love every person that crosses your path as though you were meeting Christ face to face. Um, looking upon the face of someone else and going, this is God's child. This is my brother and sister who God has created in His image. And how do I love them? How do I portray Christ to them to draw them closer to a perfect understanding of love, which is Christ Himself? And I think we need to really take a serious hard look at ourselves as Christians and see how we love. Um, you know, how the it's, it's, it's easy to see the statistics in the church of households that are falling apart, marriages that are falling apart. You know, it's, it's, the stats are not that different to the world's stats. And the world looks at us and goes, yeah, but you're supposed to be on the forefront of showing us how to love, of being the image of Christ. But yet, everything doesn't look different to the world. And we, the church across the world, needs to take a hard look at itself and be like, we need to get down on our knees um, to wash our disciples' feet, to wash our servants' feet, to wash the sinners' feet, but also get down on our knees and ask God how to love properly again. Um, and we need to do that, I think. Yeah. And I think it's also such a, a big thing that people are often asking about purpose and about mm -hmm. calling about what should I be doing and how should I be going about it and I think God is so much less concerned often with what we're doing 
in the way in which we're doing it because if everyone this is really the crux of the thing is no matter what you do if you go out into your world and into your sphere of influence and you love people and you really are intentional about loving people as Jesus loved you um, then that really is fulfilling your purpose in life that is that is where calling comes in we all want the grand plan we all want to be the main show the main whatever or you know we want the God to reveal our great plan in the vault of lightning. Um, but yet he says, you will be known by how you love. Mm. Um, and it's just so simple, but yet you want to draw people into Christ, I love them. Um, it's, it's, it's so simple, but yet so hard, all at the same time. And um, that is a, the plan of the church. So if you, you're struggling with your purpose in Christ, Start by loving people um, and let God do the rest. Uh, he will use you where He needs you. But the command for everyone in the church is to love like I have loved you. And, and how does that love look? That love looks like service and everyone can serve. Yeah. Everyone can serve the people in their workplace and you know do something above and beyond what is expected to really... Serve in your local church. Yeah, serve to, your family. I yeah. think, you know, there's it. Everyone can serve in a hundred ways every day. I, you know, I always go back to the quote Mother Teresa said, we can't do all do great things, but we can all do small things with great love. Yeah. And everyone can serve. So the, loving the way Jesus did looks like service and it looks like sacrifice. It looks like you know, stepping way out of your own comfort zone in order to serve and to love other people. And, so, and I, I think the big thing for us to just remember is, you know, how do we do this? Because this doesn't come from us. And it's, it's not natural life. for us. It's not natural to get down on your knees and wash someone else's feet. It's it's immensely uncomfortable. It challenges you to the core. Well, the washer and the washing. The, yeah, you know, like <laughs> yeah, fingers in between my toes. It's 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 awkward. And Jesus is trying to say, in order to do what I've commanded you, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's gonna shake your thinking. It's gonna shake your soul to discomfort. Um, but it's good and, and it needs to happen because the only way we are comfortable is in the world's standards but when we enter Christ's standards for us it's going to go against the grain of what the world is doing and it's going to be uncomfortable um, and we need to be okay with that so some practical application I think is important to remember is how do we then cultivate this love because it doesn't come from us like we can't get it created within ourselves and I think the the only way that we can really love others as we have been loved is to live in the truth of how much we are loved mm. because it's really a thing about overflow mm. it's when when I am continually overwhelmed by the grace of God and about how much God loves me then that can kind of flow out of me to other people and so we have to make sure that we're in a place that we're connecting with God and that we're living in that sense of gratitude and awe and wonder because it's in that place that we can experience that love for each other and then just like any love in any relationship it's also a choice is that even when you don't experience it you have to be connected with God so that you can have that experience but even when you don't have it you can still choose to serve whether you've got the feelings or not yeah. um, and I think sometimes it's just about a choice to be yeah. sacrificial and to serve and I think looking at the new series as we wrap up um, when we receive the new heart and we constantly keep our hearts supple to the leading and the calling of Christ on our lives, um, when we constantly view a new thing and look for the things that God is doing around us, we'll find people to love. You know, when we uh, realize that we are a new creation, when we, you know, they, they just journey through the stuff again and again, and it all ties in, like I started with is the love is the glue that holds it all together and when we are making continually allowing Christ to make every aspect of us new um, we will see the need for love around us and when we continue allowing Christ to make us new we yeah. become more like him and the essence of, of who him he is, is love yeah. yeah so so that that's really the crux of the matter is allowing God to make us new so that we can become like him and show his love and live out his love in the world.